Welcome to beautiful Park City, Utah for stage five of the 2019 Larry H. Miller Tour of Utah into Canyons Village at Park City Mountain for 85 miles, 137 kilometers out there today with even more climbing at America's toughest stage race today. After a very fast circuit race in downtown Salt Lake City last night, the climbers get their chance again today. And we're gonna look to see if there's a GC raid at the front as well as James Piccoli tries to overcome his 44 second deficit to the yellow jersey of Ben Hur. Hey guys, welcome back to my first ever experience at the Tour of Utah. We're here inside the Peloton on stage five. And the plan today, just like every day, is try to get into the breakaway. And it's really hard at this race because it's such a selective race with there being so many big mountain days and mountaintop finishes and it being at altitude that it suits a very few number of riders. So a lot of teams are always constantly trying to put somebody in the break. And a lot of the days it's just been taking forever for the break to go, which has been making it super hard. Here's an inside look of stage two. And once again, trying to make the break. And this was up to Powder Mountain. The break took over an hour and 40 minutes to finally get away, which is a good thing that I wasn't in it because almost everyone missed out on time cut that was in the break that day just because of the mountaintop finish going up Powder Mountain was just so brutally hard. Here's stage three. I thought I had finally made the break after two days of trying, and on the third day I thought I would made it, and then we kind of had the wrong mixture of guys and were caught just after one of the intermediate sprints. Again, same story, different day, stage four, super aggressive start, and I was just lining up early, and you can kind of tell who's lining up early and who's uh, going for the break and which teams are, and as the race, later, in later on, as the race starts to play out, it's easier to tell, just because teams have different obligations. If they have a guy in GC, you figure they're going to protect him and not try to race and go for the break most of the time. You can follow like sprinter jerseys, guys going for the sprint points, and also KOM points. So back at stage five, I pre-rode this course three or four times, so I knew it very well. And I was hoping with it being a pretty narrow at the start with a lot of turns that something would get away early. And with stage six being so hard, finishing up, going up guardsmen, dropping down into Park City with it being such a selective day that... This being stage five was really the last day for a break to even have a chance to succeed and a time to get in the break that wasn't just gonna be a suicide move like it would be the following stage. So I lined up early. Our, we had four or five guys gunning for the break and two kind of sitting in waiting for the finish. And it's a really technical finish, going up, finishing up a cat two climb before dropping down with a really fast and twisty descent. With the last 1500 meters being uphill and fairly steep into a tight 300 meter sprint finish. I was banking on the break getting away before the first KOM, otherwise it was just going to be so brutal trying to get up that with the break not having gone. Because once the break goes, the field will usually relax a little. So I was kind of looking for this guy right here in the red jersey. I knew he was high up on the KOM classification, so I knew he would be trying to get in the break to get points and hop into the polka dot jersey. And Lachlan, the EF rider, he seemed the last couple days like he was trying to go for the break as well. And he was, I think he was the reason our break didn't go on stage three because he was a little too high up at GC on that point. Yeah, so I knew who to follow. Travis McCabe, another great guy to follow as he was in the points jersey, the white jersey for uh, best sprinter. So he was gonna be looking to clean up on some intermediate sprint points with there not being with it being such a hard finish, or this would be a good way to kind of cushion his lead in that classification. So kind of watching out for those guys and just being active at the front. And I was just so banking on, like I just really wanted to make a break. That was my main goal coming to Tour of Utah, just try to make something happen. And like I said, it's just so selective that sitting in the field is almost worthless unless you can actually climb with the top five or six guys, which is super hard at this level. So just going for the break was kind of my best option as well as the team's best option so that was kind of our game plan for the week and it's always good to get some camera time and stuff so you can see we're putting a bunch of little moves and you know everyone's kind of looking around looking back no one really wants to pull super hard because you don't want to commit and guys are kind of pulling off and letting little gaps go and i was trying to be as aggressive as i could with also taking into consideration the altitude and not you know trying to waste all my bullets right away 
before that KOM. Because like I said, if the, if the break didn't go before that first KOM, it's just going to be like an absolutely brutal 10 minute effort. And it was kind of, it was really windy this day. So I wanted to get off the front as well, just to not deal with the stress of being in the field. And it's super stressful when it's windy, everyone's fighting for position nonstop. So here's where I make my move. I attack up the right hand side in the gutter, knowing we're coming up to a right hand turn through a roundabout. And guys were kind of sitting up, and that's why I took the initiative into my own hands to try to make something happen and try to get away as soon as possible, and hopefully some guys follow me. And I'm the first one through the corner, kind of catch the motorcycle. Motorcycles are going a little slow. And you can see McCabe's coming across to me, which is just like I, I was saying, it's a good guy to take with as he's going for the points jersey, so he's more than willing to help rotate and share the workload. And right now we're just getting started. He's telling me he just wants to sit on a little bit and catch his breath because he just bridged across. And, you know, I'm just kind of playing along with it. I'll, I'll continue to pull until we kind of get a group of five or six rotating and working smoothly. And don't mind my heart rate. It shows it's not super high, but it definitely, I was very fatigued as this was the sixth day of racing here at altitude. So it wasn't really moving super high, but I was hurting pretty bad at this point. You can see McKay pulls through and we start divvying up the workload and trying to get something rolling here. As guys are jumping across left and right, as people panic really quickly when they see something go that gets more than 20 seconds up the road, all of a sudden it's like one attack leads to another attack and leads to another attack and finally all those attacks bridged up and brought have brought you back to the field and it gets reabsorbed but that wasn't the case here you could i could tell the field was kind of wanting something to go early with the crosswinds and stuff so bridge lane guy comes up to us and i think at this point there's four or five of us cave's kind of looking around seeing what what we've got left and who's come across or if the field's caught us and we're going pretty hard up this little kicker just parallel on the interstate and like I said it's really windy so you're just doing everything you can to stay on the wheel and not let tons of gaps go to open up to waste energy here comes Lachlan and a 303 guy along with uh, one of the Italians McCabe and the most aggressive rider guy so I know he's going for the KOM jersey and it's the perfect combination not a huge group that the field's gonna be the field's gonna let us go in the dominant teams that have GC ambitions are going to let us roll because no one in this group is more than, I don't even think anyone at this group is within 10 minutes. So I'm going to sit on and let those guys pull through as it's a lot of horsing around kind of at the beginning. A lot of gaps are opening up and no one really wants to pull and it's kind of unorganized. And as a group, you're still trying to find your rhythm of who's going to pull where. And ultimately, we ended up with 11 guys and it's a really good mixture of guys from different teams as we figured out a rotation pretty quickly uh, everyone kind of let mccabe go for the intermediate sprint so there's no real contention for that and then the kom the bridge lane guy uh, no one contended the kom points either and let him just take them so at that point we're kind of just hoping the field gives us enough big enough gap and we can make it to the finish